Fortnite Competitive is, without a doubt, one of the most exciting aspects of the game right now. With millions of dollars on the line and hundreds of thousands of people lined up ready to compete, it's essential to be able to do so on multiple different platforms. After all, Fortnite is a cross-platform game that supports various different inputs. Whether you're playing on keyboard and mouse, controller, or even mobile. Hey, mobile players, how you doing? Fortnite allows you to compete alongside the best of the best. That's why it's crucial to be able to handle playing against keyboard and mouse players who are cracked. Controller players are also one of the most dominant forms of players as they make up the most significant number of people playing Fortnite. That's why we've created this guide to teach you guys how to dominate in events and tournaments where you can put your skills to the table and show what you got. This guide will outline key concepts of domination and special moves only the best of the best know. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, your friend. That's right, Keith Allen. If you haven't connected with me on my Instagram, hey, you got to do so as soon as you can. I want to encourage you guys to be the best that you can be at Fortnite and in life. I believe in you guys. By the way, if you're looking for more educational Fortnite content, I highly recommend taking a look at the InstaPro Pass over at ProGuys.com. Purchasing the Pro Pass will unlock a wall of content, mastery of courses, and multiple live coaching sessions with real Fortnite pros. It is amazing. Elevate your game today, not tomorrow, but today. Link, as always, is in the description down below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started. Playing on keyboard does have its advantages. After all, you get way more buttons and keybind variations, duh. But don't ever doubt for a second that controller can perform just as well. Controller players are given slight advantages to counter these, such as aim assist and advanced movement. And these things are going to be the things, I like to say things a lot, we're going to be covering in this video. Without further ado, man, let's get into these tricks. Starting off with aim assist, we're going to go over how to use it to the maximum to gain an advantage over keyboard and mouse players. Keep in mind that the majority of these players are aiming solely off of muscle memory and coordination, which can easily be thrown off via good movement. That's where the controller advantages come in. Having aim assist gives you the ability to dominate when it comes to medium, long range, and short distance shooting. Okay, so think of it like this. While the keyboard and mouse player has to react and fine tune their accuracy to every movement you make, all you gotta do is just keep your aim in their general area. That's it. And let aim assist do the rest. It's a great balance to give controller players, you know, to make sure that the mouse aiming doesn't completely dominate. Now, being able to use aim assist actually has a bit of skill to it that is really overlooked. You can time your left trigger pulls with your first shot accuracy to do massive damage, man. We suggest heading into a creative lobby with friends and practicing getting some critical headshots with every first shot you take with your weapons that have this feature. So the way you want to do this is by pulling your trigger right before the first shot of any gun and shooting almost precisely one second after you pull the left trigger. This will tighten your reticle and also pull your aim in towards your enemies, making it easier for you to hit your shots. So guys, mastering the effective use of aim assist, it's going to make a huge difference when it comes to the outcome of a shoot off between a keyboard and mouse player versus controller. Besides aiming, controller players actually have one very underrated advantage that is barely talked about, and that is, my friends, advanced movement. Being able to move 360 degrees with an analog stick is a huge advantage compared to an eight-angle movement of keyboard and mouse. Oh my goodness, I feel stiff talking about it, like, like I feel like the Tin Man right now. Can't move, I can't move. Controller players are actually able to do some insane mobility tricks that keyboard and mouse players wish they, I mean, they dream about this. An excellent example of this is the Infinite 90s without any sort of reset. If you've ever seen a beast controller player, they're able to crank 90s and definitely without stopping at all. That just isn't fair. But one example of this is the Infinite EJ Dash, which will allow you to move at a much faster rate than usual. Using this and other movement tricks with the controller will certainly give you an advantage over keyboard players. Another example is being able to strafe at many different angles. Strafing is the technique of using your movement to avoid taking damage and throwing off an opponent's aim. Keyboard players can only strafe in eight directions, while controller players can do so in 360 degrees. Now now, movement and aim are obviously fundamental aspects of Fortnite, but what about the rest? Fortnite is a game where you can improve at so many different things that it could just become hard to keep track of all the various weaknesses you might have to strengthen. And I know it can be very discouraging, I get it. One of those that tends to be very common amongst players is positioning. I say this all the time to you guys on my Insta. Positioning is such an important factor in a game like Fortnite that is often the sole reason causing fantastic, amazing players to perform worse than expected. Being mechanically efficient is so important, but not having the ability to place yourself in positions of advantage is serious. Some of the best performing controller players in the world are some of the smartest ones when it comes to positioning. 
Okay, so think about players like Ghost Aiden or Ghost Issa. You know, they're almost always at the high ground in the end game, right? And that's the key to prosper in positioning. Getting and maintaining high ground in the end game is what will make you more consistent dominating those stressful end games. Getting Victory Royale in Fortnite competitive is very important. They tend to give a vast majority of the points that a player could earn in a game. So being able to put yourself in the right spot to stay alive for as long as possible is essential and the best place for that just so happens to be high ground once again. Being the highest player on the map will separate you from the fights going on below you, especially during rotations where everyone is running around frantically trying to get into the zones. Establishing high ground as soon as the end game begins can make a world of difference in terms of how much damage you take and can do. End game is usually where most advanced players will be looking for kills in competitive tournaments. And the biggest struggle most run into is finding angles to shoot at players. What's great about being the highest person on the map is that you have a vantage point that you can see everyone on the map. You feel like Porzingis on the Dallas Mavericks, okay? You feel so tall and unstoppable. This paired with your aim assist will allow for easy lasering and simple picks. Stacking up points as you also keep yourself away from all the fighting that's going on below you. Now, how do you get the high ground? That's a really good question. It's actually quite simple. Once you're entering the final zones, find the area of the highest natural high ground. Try your best to get to the area using shockwaves or by building up towards it. Once you're there, start cranking 90s up until you're the highest person in the game. Once you've gained the ground, start looking for opponents to laser and maintain your high ground. This is when the fun begins. So keep in mind that many players are going to try to contest you, all right? That's just how it is. This is where you must keep building and using your high ground advantage to deal damage to these people. Think of these situations as creative 1v1s where you want to keep high ground while also finding angles and opportunities to deal damage. As the zone shifts and storm follows, make sure to rotate above by building floors and pyramids as you run. A lot of players just tend to drop down or shockwave into circle, which will usually result in them losing their high ground and having to deal with getting it back. Now that you know why the high ground is so important, let's look at why not everyone can always get it. So to be able to get high ground, super important. You must be in a position where you're not in the center of players. Being in the middle of multiple opponents can cause you to get shot at from different directions and become instantly outnumbered, which is a horrible place to be. The changes of this happening while you're going for height also increases significantly due to the fact that people don't want you to have the advantage. That's why you must be staying towards the highest point of natural high ground where it's harder to be shut down and damaged. Natural objects and mountains are always the best cover when it comes to needing a sturdy and robust piece to build upon or just take cover behind. So now you know everything about positioning on the high ground, but let's take a look at rotations, which goes hand in hand with everything that we talked about. A lot of times you can put yourself in the perfect spot before every other player in the game. This can be done by taking a quick look at the mini map that is located conveniently on the top right of your screen. Use this to know where the next circle will be and where you want yourself to be. So let's just say, for example, that the fifth zone is closing and you just now see the new zone's path. In less than two minutes, this next zone is gonna be closing in and you're gonna have to rotate in. What most people will do is that they're gonna wait in their spot until the storm starts closing. Uh-oh. But what most pros and intelligent players do is scope out the environment of the next circle via their mini-map and anything they can see on their screen. You know, what's useful about the map is that it shows you many, many things that you might not be able to see if you're boxed up or surrounded by other people's builds. So being able to see pre-built houses, trees, mountains, and other objects that can help you with planning your rotation is tremendous. Once you've found the perfect spot for you to box up in, go ahead and just start rotating as soon as possible to avoid getting trampled on during the rush of the storm, closing rotation that most players will do. Move fast and low as you keep track of your surroundings. You know, a good thing to keep in mind is that your materials aren't as important as your health. So don't be afraid to tunnel and throw down walls to protect yourself from incoming shots and potential threats. This is a mistake that a good majority of players tend to do as well, especially controller players when being compared to keyboard and mouse players who can make fast flicks with the mouse. So one strategy that should be used for short distance rotations is tunneling. Although tunneling can be very wasteful of materials, it's by far the best way to rotate with full protection, while also protecting from being shot down, which is huge. For controller players who can't turn fast, we recommend shortening the distance in which you turn your view to building. By decreasing the radius at which you turn to build, you can place builds faster without extra turning. Overturning is generally the reason why many controller players tend to feel like they can't do advanced building strategies like keyboard players. But we guarantee, guys, that controller players can do just as much with practice. To recap some of the main points in this video, we're going to be going over the basic summary of each section. We hope that this helps, you know, confirm the critical aspects of the video in your head so that you remember these tips the next time you get to play Fortnite. 
First and foremost, you must be able to make the most out of your aim assist, okay? And the best way of doing so is by going into creative and practicing your timing with some of your friends. Second, you should consider learning movement tricks that are going to put you at an advantage that keyboard players don't even have. Using every opportunity like this is what's going to give you a chance at outdoing others in tournaments and events. Third, always, always put your focus on high ground while you're approaching the end game. High ground is absolutely necessary for controller players who cannot always react and turn fast as keyboard and mouse players. Fourth, make sure you're focusing more on lasering players and using your aim assist rather than just jumping in their face and just going crazy for fast-paced end games. Fifth, plan your rotations and get a head start on your enemies. Being the first to take a power position will guarantee a much more comfortable and smooth sailing endgame. Use tunneling and other building maneuvers like the infinite EJ dash to quicken your rotations as well. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. Hey, I want to see you be the best that you can be, not only in Fortnite, but in life. And as always, we hope you enjoy this video. Hey, hit that like button if you enjoyed this and throw all your thoughts and comments down below. We really appreciate all the support, guys. We really, really do. We'll see you on the next one.